The next step in the procedure for integrating SAP with the LDAP system is to create an LDAP connector within the SAP system. To create the LDAP connector, the transaction code is LDAP. You get to the direct -to service uh, connection screen after you execute the transaction LDAP. Now to create the connector, the LDAP connector, click on the LDAP connectors button. As you see there is no entries here, so click on ch display change icon, continue and you get the new entries button. Click on new entries and you get and you get a screen to enter the connector details. Now the connector name, keep in mind, uh, has to be the RFC destination that you created, the TCP IP RFC destination that you created. Uh, that has to be used as the connector name. So the connector name would be, this is the RFC destination that we have created. So we use that and then so we have this specified application server name uh, that the LDAP connector is going to use. And the SAP, this is the SAP application server name. Uh, and then you say connector is active and keep the trace off. And now you save. So you get the status as green. Once you have that, save it and you go back. Now, the next step in defining the connector is to create the LDAP server. So, click on the LDAP server button. So, we already have created one LDAP server name. So, to create an LDAP server, uh, you need to have a give a server name. This could be whatever name you want to give. Uh, but in, keep in mind that, you know, the connector name that you use, uh, the connector that you created, that name has to be the RFC destination name that you created in SM59, the TCP IP RFC destination. Uh, and the, that cannot be any other name. But the server name could be whatever name you want to give. Now, this are the, again, these pieces of information you need to get from the LDAP team. So once you click on, so we'll just go and see how the screen would look if it's a new entry. So this would be a white screen where you could enter the field and the value. You enter the host name and this would be given to you by the LDAP team. You enter the port number. This again will be given to you by the LDAP team. Uh, you select the product name and depending on what LDAP product you have, there are different products. You pick the appropriate one that you have. Now what we have is the Microsoft's uh, Active Directory. So we pick that. Protocol version will be LDAP version 3. LDAP application will be user. And this is very critical. This base entry information is very important here. Uh, so this, this, this is basically going to point or specify the location on the LDAP side from where the user IDs need to be, uh, user information uh, is stored. So when you do the synchronization in SAP to get the user IDs from the LDAP system, this, this will be used. This is the location on the LDAP side that will be used to get the user IDs. So the base entry, keep in mind, specifies basically specify the objects or uh, the attributes and the location of the user IDs on the active directory side or the LDAP side. The next field that you have is system logon field. Now, this is the user ID uh, that we, we just saw in the previous demo uh, that will be used to pull the data from the LDAP system. So this ID had, did not exist on the SAP side. This definitely has to exist on the LDAP side. So pick that, enter that user ID, and then click on Save. Now, 
when you save it for the first time or whenever you modify something, uh, it is going to ask you, the system will ask you to enter a uh, transport request number. If it does, create one if you want. Uh, now click on click back. And now let's go and uh, connect Oops. the system. Now click on log on. Now we are trying to log on to the LDAP system to uh, pull the user ID information, the user information from the LDAP system. Click on the system, use system user, the user ID that we used, the SVC underscore SAP. Uh, so click on that checkbox. And here in the username field, you will see the base entry uh, values that you specified. So let's go quickly to the LDAP server. Uh, to check the base entry again for, for understanding. So if you see this base entry, oh, so this is not the base entry, sorry. Uh, remember the distinguished uh, uh, name that we specified in the previous demo? That is what you get here in this field. So click on, so this is not the base entry. Uh, that was my mistake. This is the base, uh, this is a distinguished name uh, values that you specified in the table LDAP user. So click on execute now. So once you click on that, uh, you will be, the status turns to green uh, to, uh, to indicate that you have logged on uh, to the LDAP system now. That is, you are now ready to pull data from the LDAP system. So to actually pull the data, we still have some uh, to actually pull the data into SAP to actually create the user IDs or do something with the user IDs in the SAP system, there are still some more uh, configuration steps that need to be done. But right now, let us go and check if this connector is working or not. So what we're going to test now is to see if we are able to see the data that exists on the LDAP side. So click on the Find button. So the base entry field values will automatically appear in the base entry field. Uh, let us go and specify some attributes. So we want to spe spe pull data based on uh, uh, user IDs. So the attribute on the LDAP side, the LDAP attribute for that, for user ID is SAM account name. Now this is specific to uh, the active directory. So if you have say iPlan or something, uh, this uh, filter could be something different. It could be username or SN or CN or whatever it is on your specific uh, LDAP uh, system. So for Active Directory, Microsoft's Active Directory, the attribute that we are going to use is SAM account name, which is for user IDs. Now let click on, uh, let's search for user IDs that begin with uh, AA. Now, if you know your, spec uh, your specific user ID and you know that it is existing on the left side, you can specify the user ID here. Uh, instead of specifying uh, the wild characters or generic search uh, criteria, you can, you can also search by specific user IDs if you know the uh, user ID. Now, since I don't know uh, what user IDs exist on uh, the LDAP side, while in this example, I'll just use some uh, asterisk uh, search criteria. So I'm searching for a user, user IDs that begin with A, or you could uh, do it for, let's say, SA, for example. Uh, so when you click on, now once you specify the uh, search criteria, now also you need to keep in mind that the braces that begin should have an and in two. So keep that in mind. Now let's click on execute. So if you see the IDs that begin with SA, use, you can see them now. So if you look at uh, the CN, this is the name of the person. 
So this is how his name is going to be displayed. Now, if you see the alias, that's the user ID. So you can see that this information that you're seeing, the SAP account name, for example, is the user ID here. Now the alias is also the same, but this is the attribute value that we pulled in our search filter. Uh, it's the SAP account name. So any ID that begins with SA, it will show up here. Now in this case, we have only uh, one user ID that begins with SA. So let's go and search for, let's say, A, for example, and see. If... Now we probably are getting, we got more inf more user IDs now. So one is Albert Alvarado. Uh, if you look at this uh, SAM account name field uh, attribute, it is AA401973. The next user ID is Amy Adams. Uh, if you look at her uh, SAM account name, it will be different. Uh, AA051274. And another user ID is Angela Amato. Um, you have a41974. Uh, so you, you are not even now with this configuration. What you're going, you're, what you're confirming here is that the data can be now pulled uh, from the LDAP system into SAP system because you are seeing the data. The data that you're seeing you know, when you execute, this data is coming out of the uh, LDAP system. This data does not exist right now in the SAP side. So, so, so for, for, for this little configuration that you have uh, done so far, you are now able to see the data in the LDAP side. Now to actually uh, bring the data into SAP from LDAP uh, and create the user IDs in SAP, uh, there, is, there are uh, uh, some other configuration that needs to be done. So one, so in order to do that configuration, uh, the LDAP team would need to extend uh, the LDAP schema, uh, the schema on the LDAP side, to include the SAP related uh, attributes. Now, how do we do that? Uh, how does uh, what attributes uh, need to be extended on the LDAP side? How does the LDAP team and the LDAP team know uh, what attributes to include in the schema, in their schema, uh, I mean the SAP attributes. Uh, so that uh, you, for doing that uh, schema extension, you need to provide some information to the LDAP team from the SAP side. So in the next demo, we'll see what that information is.